This is Sobin Smoked Porter from Stone Angel Brewing in Winnipeg. It's apparently a traditional uh, style smoked porter that uh, that would go well with the uh, Sobin Irish Halloween Festival. All right, today I'm going to do a teardown of this smart wall switch, smart light switch that I found at my local Dollarama for four bucks. I know some people in the past have said, if it's four dollars, then it's not a dollar store. When you call a store that's called Dollarama, it's a damn dollar store. Deal with it. This is Canadian prices. I don't know where that rant came from. Uh, so when I spotted this thing at Dollarama, I immediately uh, sought out a staff person and said, do you have any more of these? And to which they said, I didn't know we had that one. So I bought it and <laughs> let's see what happens. Uh, so th the first thing that means that I'm not going to actually use this is it works with Apple HomeKit. Ain't no Apple stuff in my house. I'm probably not going to be able to use it. So for four bucks, it's a teardown. Unless there's something interesting in there that I can repurpose possibly. Uh, copyright 2017. I found a few things online saying that this was released at CES in 2017. And, uh, I can't find any reference to it at all, except when I search through their help files and I can find, uh, find a couple of, uh, help articles, but there's no mention of it from the main page. You can't even get to it from a link from the main page. What else does it say about this thing? Remotely accessible from your home automation devices, DIY install. It can monitor energy use. That's interesting. Plug and play, uh, except for the installation part. Um, Siri voice control. Yet another thing that I won't be doing with it. Uh, proximity set accessories to turn on or off automatically. So it looks like it's got a little motion detector uh, kind of window in there. So that's uh ah, comes with some wire nuts. That's nice. Uh, what else we got? Got a code in here. That's interesting. Uh, it will be needed for setup. Okay. And we've got a basic install uh, guide, which looks a lot like what I found on the website. But it looks basically like you just disconnect your existing switch connect this one so it's got a load in line or a, a line and neutral input and a load output which i assume is the line and then a frame ground okay and that just pops off there and that screws onto a standard uh box uh the standard north american rectangular box that this would go in um there'd be a screw goes through there and there that threads into the box and then these two threaded uh screw holes will take the cover plate if you choose not to use their cover plate which just snaps on okay that's all fairly standard stuff um and for those of you not in north america these are the standard wire connecting devices for uh for means officially these are called wire nuts uh most people that I know tend to just refer them as Marettes. Marette being a brand name of uh, one of the more common ones. And how you use them is basically you take your two wires. They should be trimmed to the same length. And you just give them a twist with your pliers. These are not the ideal pliers for the job, but they'll, they'll get you there. I mean... Okay, so I am not a licensed electrician, just caveat right there. Uh, my technique is not perfect because I don't do this for a living, but I am a certified homeowner. Uh, so, so you notice inside there, there's this spiral spring kind of thing, and it gets narrower as it gets closer to the top. And it's also, it's actually a square cross section, and the pointy bit of the square is facing inwards. So when I thread that onto here, 
those are going to dig into the copper and tighten in or and uh, cut through any oxidization. Now, as I screw that in there, because that narrows, it gets tighter. So now we have a solid mechanical connection and a solid electrical connection. You can reef on that and that's not going to come apart. But you can unscrew it. And if we zoom in closer here, you can see where the spring piece was nicking into the wires, cutting through the uh, any oxidization and into fresh copper. So that was creating both the mechanical and uh, reinforced electrical connection. That's a bit of an aside. I know that in Europe, um, these Wago connectors, these are knockoffs, but whatever, are used for mains and they're good for, this one says 400 volts, 20 some amps. So uh, yeah, okay, that's a bit of an aside. So here would be the standard type of switch that you would find normally in, in the box on the wall. Um, and that would get removed to put this in. And this would just barely fit into the box. Okay, I, this is a double gang box. It would take two, uh, two lights or two, or two switches or two plugs in it. That's a single gang that just happens to have a plug in it right now. That's gonna be part of my experiments later. But this guy would just screw in right there and there's just barely enough room. And then this more standard switch could sit beside him. And there's room back behind there for the wiring, for the uh, slack wiring and stuff. But I'm not going to put this in a box just for my experiment today. Because I like to live a little bit dangerously. Don't do this at home. Caveat. Because, well, I mean, I could use this in manual mode if I choose to. But I think it's more interesting to tear it apart and see what's inside it. If I can get it back together again afterwards, if I can reprogram it, if there's something in there, it would be cool if there was just an ESP8266 or something similar in there, wouldn't it? Let's find out. Uh, I see a little screw there on the side. Okay, so it looks like there's some kind of clippiness happening there and there. That's easier than I expected. Okay, we have a circuit board. We have a kind of an insulating little piece of plastic here. That little six pin device looks an awful lot like an optocoupler. That's good to see. Um, I have a 3.3 .3 volt uh, and a ground there. That's interesting. That's looking more and more like my theory may have been correct. This board is, let me zoom out a little bit. This board looks like it's just connected with header pins. It is cool. Okay. So we have, this will be the higher voltage board back here. It's another op amp there. We have a capacitor, we have a fuse, we have what looks to me like a relay. We have a device on a heat sink there. Ooh, this is the load wire, the red one. And that is a current transformer, a current sensing transformer. Nice. Uh, Wi-Fi wall switch, it says 2017, 914. So, two years and a couple of months old. Huh. So this is clearly the power board and the power supply board. Why can't I see what that is under the heat sink? Heat sink comes off, has heat sink goop. Can I push that back enough to read it? I can't read that. Um, could it be a voltage regulator, maybe? Oh, okay. No, that's... I was... Oh, that is a relay. But this device here is connected. One of its uh, connections goes to the line out wire. So that is maybe a triac? For dimming? Sure. And then power supply stuff, there is an inductor, there's a couple of 47 microfarad 400, or 4.7 microfarad 400 capacitors. 
There's a few diodes on the back side here. So, yeah, there is some kind of a power supply on there. So, okay. Yeah, um, a triac would make sense because this thing claims to be able to dim, right? Okay, that's, uh, that's the power board. So here is clearly the low voltage board. Can I get that out of there? Okay, that lifts out. The Wi-Fi antenna looks like it's just adhered onto there. Okay. Yeah, that's just a little adhesive strip antenna coming off that little connector there. Okay. Oh, interesting things on this side. But is that soldered down? It is. Okay. What is that module? Incipio WS 2017-09. That'll be the date. It is a MAC address and a serial number. And I think that setup code, is that the same as 832? Yes, it is. Okay. So what is under the sticker there? Are we peeling? Are we peeling? We are peeling. Okay. RTL8188ER. RTL, real tech. So while we're in here, and this guy HH1719, I'm gonna guess that's some kind of a RAM or ROM or PROM chip or something, memory chip. Let's see what else we can find. PHP 4817, not quite sure. There is a crystal there running at 8 megahertz. So that's, that might be a microcontroller too, actually. Okay, I was able to find a couple of the chips, but not many of them. But I did find the two main ones that were on the Wi-Fi board. And the big one, as suspected, is a Realtek chip, RTL8188ER. Confidential. Shh, don't show anybody. So this uh, RTL8188 is an integrated single chip uh 802.11n wireless uh, PCIe interface. Oh, that's interesting. That's all the various RF stuff. 150 megabits per second. Cool. Obviously overkill. It can do multimedia. <laughs> so 56 pin QFN. So there's lots of uh, inputs and outputs on it by the looks of it of various different sorts. And there it is in all its glory. Oh, hello. It has some GPIO pins. That's the very popular no connection pins. So it doesn't really need to have 56 pins, but that's the package. Not really seeing any of the sort of uh, transmit receive. Oh, uh, TRXP, TRXN, maybe. RX and TX, maybe. But again, that would be the PCIe stuff probably i'm not at all familiar with that okay so there's the pcie stuff antenna controls led interfaces bluetooth okay gpio Ooh, for bluetooth coexistence this doesn't seem to do bluetooth but that allows it that allows it to talk to a bluetooth chip so it's voltages uh runs on you know 3.3 typically so i'm guessing that power supply board is probably giving it 3.3 volts Enough, uh, enough about that. The other chip that was on that Wi-Fi module is this. Uh, uh, th three volt again, yeah, 120 megabit serial flash. So, and it talks SPI though. Okay. So obviously there's SPI on that uh, chip as well. I didn't find what that guy is. I couldn't find what this guy in the power supply board is. These diodes are just fast switching diodes. Couldn't even find this little guy so that's disappointing that's probably my google foo though that's the fancy stuff on this side we have a very obvious pir sensor 
We have three tactile switches and one push on, push off. Push on, push off switch is activated by this guy that just fell out of the corner there. And then tactile switches, there's that and that and that. Okay. Oh, and there's uh, an assortment of LEDs on there too. A bunch of them actually. Oh, probably showing the brightness going through these little light guides here. That makes sense. Once again, a lot going on in an overstock item found at a dollar store. Wow. Do I even need to tell you not to try this at home? I may not be an electrician, but I have been working with uh, electrical thingamabobs for a very long time. So I'm relatively confident that I'm not going to kill myself doing this. Okay, here we go. That's a good start. No explosions. So, volts AC. There should be about 124 there. Yeah. Okay. Volts DC. Now I noticed there was a set of pins over here. Marked 3 volts and ground. So let's see what those are. There we go. 3.3 .3 volts. Nice and stable. And this one... Also 3.3 .3 volts. Okay. So that was right. And that's going on a connector down to the other board. That's on which this connector here, which is coming down to power this guy. That makes sense. Probably not a lot else to see on there, I don't think. Um, where is my neutral... there and my line out there 13 volts so yeah it's it's off at the moment okay so now i've got this guy connected down here and it's sort of back in its case so it's not quite as janky and hazardous i've got one side of my meter connected to the neutral Ooh, a click and a blue light okay so I guess, where's my other probe here? Is there any power over there right now? Not really. What happens if I push that button? There we go. It's on. And it's back off again. Okay. If I turn it on, and then I use this little dimmer thing here yeah that's working and you can sort of see as I'm dimming it these little blue lights coming up and down that's cool oops I've lost that so they were back at full voltage and there we go so I could theoretically just use this as a standard switch um, what does that do That's a little push on, push off switch. Nothing. The lights are coming on here, but nothing's happening. Okay, so it's some kind of a bypass switch, I guess. All right, I could probably read the read the book, but these blinking lights here, according to this. Let me just safeify that a little bit. Flashing blue light me is for pairing, basically. But to pair it, you need an Apple app, which I don't have and I'm not going to get because I don't have any Apple phones. That's a conscious choice. Um, so as a Wi-Fi device, I'm not going to be able to use it, probably. So let's just see if it shows up as a Wi-Fi device. Presumably it sets its own access point and uh, that's how you would talk to it. Push the switch for three seconds, I think it said. There, okay, now we got a blinking pairing light. Oh, look at that. What is that? That's what I thought. Okay. So a smart wall switch is putting out a kick-ass signal. Hmm, wonder if I can connect to it. Smart wall switch connecting. Checking... 
Checking. Hmm. Me not providing internet access. Whatever. Connect to it anyways. Connected to Wi-Fi network smart wall switch. Right. Scanning smart wall switch. Okay, so smart wall switch. What can it do? What is it? Um, Phytex technology. Phytex technology. Whatever. Find open ports. Ooh, it has a web server on it. Let's try this. It wants me to sign in. Okay. Wonder if that's the password. Nope, it doesn't like that. Okay. Wonder if that's the username. Nope. Well, that didn't work, um, and I did a bit of Googling, and I couldn't find anybody who was uh, who had these uh, the password for this thing. So I'm assuming that's not a public access sort of a thing, uh, that web page there. So, I don't know. Um, well, this uh, isn't going to be nearly as useful as I had thought it would be. Might look a little bit more closely at this board though, because it can create the 3.3 volts. It can control this, I'm assuming, triac over here, and it can control this resistor. And it's got a bunch of header pins on it. So I could probably chase out what a lot of these uh, connections are doing, and uh, maybe, 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 control this thing and use it for power. 3 volts, 3.3 volts is a very ESP8266 friendly voltage. So maybe all is not lost yet. Um, just got to figure out what some of these chips on here are doing. I'm assuming, so I'm guessing that this one is probably part of the power supply over here, given its proximity to the big caps and more importantly the, in, the uh, inductor there. And I'm guessing that this guy over here is probably related to the current sensor in some way. Um, and then we've got these two opto-isolators. And again, this one is close to this set of four pins that goes down to the main board. And this one is right in the middle of the power supply area. So that's probably part of the power supply, and that may, in fact, be connected to this relay. That would be cool if it was. But that, I think, is another experiment for another day. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this slightly interesting. I was, uh, I was interested to see what was inside this thing. Um, doing a bit of Googling around, I found that these things were about 60 bucks when they were new thereabouts, which makes sense with the amount of technology that's in this, quite honestly. But it's two-year-old technology. Presumably, they didn't sell as well as they had hoped because they no longer, like I said, they no longer even mention them on the main part of their webpage. But uh, I don't know. I might be able to use this for something or whatever. It was just a fun teardown. Thanks again. I will talk to you later. Oh yeah. Questions, comments down there. Yeah. Thanks. Bye.